Over the course of the Rise and Fall series, we have had the opportunity to look at some of NASCAR's best teams and what ultimately led to their fall, and we have also looked into some of NASCAR's lesser known entities. Well today, we are looking back at one of NASCAR's most dominating teams who between their three cars would dominate much of NASCAR in the early 2000s. That's right, we are taking a look back at the rise and fall of Dennett Racing. Let's begin. In 1998, wealthy businessman Larry Dennett Sr. had an investing partner from the Laughing Clown Malt Liquor Company on board as the team's primary sponsor for four races that season, as the team would make their beginnings on a part-time basis starting at the 1998 Food City 500. At this race, they showed up with Steve Kinzer set to be their driver, however, unfortunately, he was unable to qualify Dennett Racing's number 26 car into the field. Then later in the 1998 season at Indianapolis, Dennett Racing and a 26 team would return with a new race driver as Terry Chabot came in, and he was able to qualify for this race in 40th place. However, with legendary African-American pioneer crew chief Lucius Washington running the team's crew, things didn't go well for the team in their first start. Rumors from those in the sport were that originally Terry Chaveau had a strong will to succeed when he was racing in ARCA, but things quickly changed once he got that Cup Series opportunity. Those close to Chaveau claimed he started acting different as if he thought he had a guaranteed ride and a high salary. Perhaps he would have had he shown a better outlook, as after only 20 laps, Chaveau would park the car, claiming for a vibration issue to be the cause of this. Upon further review by Crew Chief Washington, by his findings, there was nothing wrong with the car other than worn tires, which was to be expected after only 20 laps. However, Chaveau would not re-enter the race, and the 26 car was credited with a 41st place finish in the 1998 Brickyard 400. Then, after taking some time off, the team returned after making big changes to the team's research and development program by signing a technological assistance agreement with Hendrick Motorsports, and Larry Dennett Jr. would be appointed as the company's vice president of brands and marketing, and he began to recruit new brands to bring into the sport as a sponsor. However, he knew that his father would need to approve changes in the driver's seat, and the team would need to have better results in order for this to happen, and this is where the father-son duo would differ early on. Dennett Jr. wanted to recruit young up-and-coming driver Jimmy Johnson to drive for the team, but Dennett Sr. still wanted to try Terry Chaveau. So the team did compete in the fall Talladega event with Chaveau behind the wheel, but upon the race's first caution, after completing the pit stop, Chaveau would exit the car in order to use the restroom and eat a chicken sandwich. Fed up with his driver's antics, Washington called on his pit crew for someone to drive, and unknown Jackman, Ricky Bobby, volunteered to step in to drive the car. After falling three laps down under caution to make the driver change, Bobby was able to run a smart race and was able to pull off an amazing comeback to finish in third place, which really impressed team owner Larry Dennett Sr. Meanwhile, rumors circled that the following argument over who the team should pursue as their driver very nearly caused Dennett Jr. to leave his father's team. However, in the end, Dennett Jr. remained, advising the technological partner Hendrick Motorsport to pursue Jimmy Johnson instead. As Dennett Racing announced following Talladega that Terry Chaveau had been released from the team and Ricky Bobby would be named the team's driver moving forward when the team would return to Rockingham, and on that day, Bobby would qualify third, and he would take the lead at lap 67, and he would remain there, getting Dennett Racing their first victory ever, and from there, this team skyrocketed from being expected to fail to being a championship caliber team. The marketing efforts of Dennett Jr. paid off, and beginning in 1999, Dennett Racing went from a four-race deal of Laughing Clown Malt Liquor running old cars to having a six-year deal with Wonder Bread and Powerade for Bobby's number 26 car with the backing of Chevy and Hendrick Race Engines. From that point on, car number 26 and the Wonder Bread Wonder Boys of Lucius Washington were a dominating force to be reckoned with, as Bobby would be known to either get the win or wreck the car trying, as the 26 team would win a total of 11 races in 1999, but he would also finish 40 for worse 7 times as well, and that was to be blamed for Bobby finishing fourth in the 1999 point standings rather than first. A lot of people in NASCAR asked Bobby if he believed he should race more conservative, but he told the media that he lived by the motto, if you ain't first, you're last. He said his father told him that at an early age, and he lived his whole life that way as an adult. Things would change for Bobby during the 2000 season after meeting his soon-to-be wife Carly Bobby in Victory Lane at Talladega. Mrs. Bobby famously was briefly seen in a broadcast flashing Mr. Bobby before TV crews cut off the broadcast. Within only two months, the two were married and expecting their first child, Walker Bobby. Being a family man now, Bobby's first or last mentality was expanded as he'd get 12 victories in 2000, but would crash out six times, resulting in a 2016 finishing second in the 2000 point standings. 
By the end of the season, tensions between Dennett Sr. and Dennett Jr. were also at an all-time high. It was no secret within the Cup Series garage that Dennett Jr. still did not like the popular rookie Bobby, but his dad was still in charge and he didn't care about the points championship as much as his son did. Dennett Sr. loved going to victory lane more than he cared about the point standings, but much to the demise of his son, Dennett Sr. took the advice of Ricky Bobby and started a second car with the support of Old Spice Deodorant as a sponsor. The truth of this car is that Old Spice wanted to buy out Bobby's contract with Wonder Bread, but he did not want to cut those ties either. Rather, Bobby along with the dentist proposed starting the team's second car to 47 with Bobby's best friend and tire changer Cal Naughton Jr. being recommended to drive the car. And from there, Dennett Racing had the perfect one-two punch with their patented phrase, shake and bake. If you were in the lead and suddenly saw that Old Spice hood in your rearview mirror, you had better believe it was just a distraction and soon the Wonder Bread car would be taking the lead. 2001 was a great year for Dennett Racing with Bobby and Naughton accounting for 9 1-2 finishes in 2001 and Ricky Bobby would win a total of 11 races that season. He would have fewer races where he crashed out in this season but his battle with Jeff Gordon was still so close in 2001 as he finished second to Gordon by just one point. It was such a close and Ricky Bobby almost won a 2001 championship. At this point, Dennett Racing had two great cars, 35 victories, numerous top fives, but yet they still could not lock up that championship, which really irritated Dennett Jr. The sponsors showed no signs of leaving, but Dennett Jr. always seemed to think that just winning races wasn't good enough, but as long as his dad was in charge, there was nothing he could do. And in 2002 and 2003, the team would still continue on their trend of Bobby and Naughton using their shake and bake move, with Bobby getting eight wins in 2002 and seven victories in 2003. Meanwhile, Though Naughton was not able to score a victory in the Cup Series, but he was able to score two Bush Series victories in 2003 and some one-off stars for Hendrick Motorsports in their Powerade-sponsored 48 car. Then in 2004, after six years and 50 Cup Series victories, the team would suffer their first hit which would lead to their downfall. Following the 2004 Food City 500, after Ricky Bobby spun Greg Bibble in the final lap to win the race, the Dennett Racing team celebrated at Applebee's as was tradition for the team. However, during the dinner, team members began to notice Mr. Dennett Sr. suffering from heavy breathing and it wasn't because he had ate too much food either. He then suddenly fell to the floor and was rushed to a local hospital. Sadly, it was just a little too late. Larry Dennett Sr. had suffered a heart attack and he would pass away after two days in the hospital. Dennett Sr. reportedly had asked his son to make one promise and that was to keep his drivers for years to come, which Dennett Jr. did agree to do, but then he also promised his father to win a championship. This would lead to months of tension between the new team owner Larry Dennett Jr. and Ricky Bobby, and ultimately Bobby would see a drop in performance only winning two races in 2004, and he did fail to make the inaugural chase for the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series Championship, but his teammate Cal Naughton Jr. would not struggle as much, picking up six second place finishes, and he finished eighth in the 2004 championship. And then in 2005, this is when things changed the most. Ricky Bobby opened the season telling NASCAR on Fox that he wanted to reinvent himself. He said he wanted to make Dennett Sr. proud and finally win that championship, but at this point Dennett Jr. did not believe Ricky Bobby and rumors were that he was already looking to create a third car for the team. Bobby would open the year off strong with seven victories in the first 11 races, including his amazing accomplishment of winning a race in reverse after an incident fighting for the victory with Jamie McMurray. However, this was also one of Bobby's worst moments and essentially the final straw for Bobby and Dennett Jr.'s eyes. Not only was NASCAR mad about Bobby driving in reverse for the win, but he was also seen on camera flipping off McMurray after he got the victory. They let the 26 team keep his 60th win, but they did find the team 100 points. This resulted in yet another argument between Bobby and Dennett Jr., but things really got heated after one night at Bobby's favorite bar, The Pit Stop, in which a man entered the bar, changed the music to jazz music, in which according to rumors from those that were there that night, the entire crowd had demanded the jukebox be turned off entirely. This led to a fight between the man and Ricky Bobby, in which the man would pin Bobby down, breaking his left arm, and which of course would have kept most from competing in the upcoming Coke 600, but that wasn't the craziest part of that night. According to the police report, Dennett Jr then entered the building saying step away from my driver after discharging a live round into the air. However, he wasn't referencing to Bobby or Naughton Jr. He was referring to the mystery man who had broke Ricky Bobby's arm. In NASCAR, everyone is talking about this new driver, John Girard. Let's find out a little bit more about him from our reporter, Davey Wessling. Talented, eccentric, dominating. These are the words that define John Girard. Before each race, Jean Girard spends time with his world-class horses, who are also gay. Jean's days are filled with sun-drenched walks with his beloved husband, Gregory. 
Though Gregory is no stay-at-home spouse, he's a world-class trainer of German shepherds. Only time will tell if Jean's foray into NASCAR will end up in victory lane. This man was none other than openly gay Formula 1 superstar Joan Girard, who had amassed 72 victories and 4 championships in the world of Formula 1 racing. He had officially been hired to drive Dennett's third entry in the 55 car with the support of Perry Airwater. He was set to make his Cup Series debut at the Coke 600, in which he would qualify for the pole position, which of course is a statement of fact and in no way a reference to the driver's sexual orientation. Originally, the plan was for Kyle Busch to race in Bobby's number 26 car in this race, but following yet another altercation between Bobby and teammate Joan Girard, Ricky Bobby said that he would drive despite having a serious arm injury. Starting from the back, Bobby would quickly find his way back towards the front and he found himself on the bumper of the 55 with 30 laps to go and at this point, Bobby was on his own as Cal Naughton Jr. had experienced engine problems but at the same time, Bobby was fiercely trying to pass Joan Girard but he couldn't find a way to do it and finally, he pushed too hard resulting in Bobby and Girard tangling with the two spinning out resulting in multiple cars a crash including Ricky Bobby who went airborne tumbling on the backstretch of Charlotte at Motor Speedway. You'd love to think that everything was fine, but rather, they were not. This is when the infamous breakdown of Ricky Bobby occurred as he thought that he was on fire, stripping down to his underwear on live television during the red flag. Ricky Bobby was then transported to a local hospital, and Gerard would not win this race as Jimmy Johnson would, but it was made clear that after 60 wins, Bobby was no longer Dennett's top guy and Joan Gerard was. Dennett Racing would actually end up firing Ricky Bobby as Dennett Jr. finally had his reason to cut ties with Bobby, calling up Ricky developmental driver Brian Wavecrest to drive the number 26 Wonderbread car. It was also revealed that Bobby and wife Carly were divorcing after she had an affair with Bobby's lifelong best friend and teammate Cal Naughton Jr. Following Ricky Bobby's firing, Joan Girard went on a run of eight consecutive victories, rallying him very fast to within 30 points of making NASCAR's chase for the cup, despite starting very late in the season. Cal Naughton Jr. said, Shake and Bake is gone, and now it's the magic man. Now you see me, now you don't. And he would score second place 12 times in 2005, still unable to get that elusive first victory. Meanwhile, Brian Wavecrest was even able to show the sign of success by scoring his first victory in the 2005 Sharpie 500 at Bristol. Things were looking great for dinner racing during the 2005 chase for the cup and it looked like they could win their first championship with Joan Girard and Cal Naughton Jr. seeming like they'd run 1-2 until we came to Talladega. Former Dennett Racing superstar Ricky Bobby was back in NASCAR in his underfunded number 62 Ricky Bobby Racing Ford with his old crew who were also let go by Dennett Racing and they had one goal in mind, beat the 55 car. Having missed qualifying early that weekend, Bobby started from the rear of the field and quickly found himself battling Brian Wavecrest, a new driver in the car Bobby won 60 races in, and he was able to pass him, and then he was able to pass his friend Cal Naughton Jr. However, when this happened, it was reported that team owner Larry Dennett Jr. had actually gave team orders for Cal Naughton Jr. to purposely wreck Ricky Bobby. This actually enraged Cal Naughton Jr., who instead actually helped Ricky Bobby pass Gerard for the lead. Because of this, Dennett then ordered for Brian Ryan Wavecrest to take out Cal Naughton Jr. for refusing team owners. Wavecrest obliged, taking out the 47 car, resulting in a wreck that would take out all competitors aside from Bobby and Joan Girard. It would result in one of the most amazing and bizarre finishes in NASCAR history in which both cars made contact and both would flip before entering the trioval in one of the most violent set of rollovers in a long time. With it appearing nobody would win the race, NBC cut the broadcast but then quickly came back to see Bobby and Joan Girard running on foot to see who would win the race and the two actually leaped to the finish line with Bobby's hand just ahead of Joan Girard. Following this in a weird showing of admiration, the two drivers exchanged a kiss on the finish line and because of this, NASCAR declared that because the drivers exited without going directly to the medical center, they were disqualified from the race. Therefore, the win would go to third place runner Cal Naughton Jr. as he picked up his first career victory. Following this race, Wonder Bread left in at racing after Brian Wavecrest was indefinitely suspended by NASCAR following his actions. Larry Dennett Jr. was also fined $2 million by NASCAR and Perrier left as well as Joan Girard went back to race Formula One. Because of this sudden financial burden, the 26 car had to be sold to Roush Fenway Racing for incoming driver Jamie McMurray and the 55 charter was sold to Bill Davis Racing and Michael Waltrip. Dennett Racing was essentially forced to close its doors after Talladega almost immediately and Cal Naughton would finish his season racing with Old Spice sponsoring the number 62 Chevy which was 
reign with the remaining assets of Dennett Racing under Ricky Bobby Racing as Kyle Naughton Jr. would win the 2005 Cup Series Championship with just one victory in his career in 157 top fives. Bobby, Naughton, and Lucius Washington would all retire as champions as an owner, driver, and crew chief after 2005, and in 2017, Ricky Bobby was inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame, as well as Lucius Washington, who we sadly lost in 2012, and in 2018, Larry Dennett Sr. was also inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and that's the story of the rise and fall of Dennett Racing, which ultimately crumbled in the hands of the ego of Larry Dennett Jr. Thanks for watching this video, and of course, it is April Fool's Day, and this was a a lot of fun to produce. If you're new here, I do these rise and fall videos on several real life NASCAR entities, so I invite you to hit subscribe for all future content like this. Please leave a like on the video, it really does help my channel out a lot, and feel free to follow me on Twitter at DannyBTalks, and I hope you have a great day. Bye guys.